Okay, moving forward with the lithium battery install. Um, when Dakota lithium batteries arrive, shipped from the factory, they are have about 10% battery charge. Um, and you're supposed to charge them, top them up all the way before you install them. So that's what I'm getting ready to do right now. <clears throat> here's my here's one of my batteries. I'm gonna charge them one at a time. I have two chargers, but I'm just gonna do one at a time and go from there. So here we have it. We got our Dakota Lithium little battery charger and our beautiful 200 amp hour 12 volt Dakota battery. And um, it's plugged in right there. Now, I will say on the back of the charger box, it clearly says to plug it straight into a wall socket and not to an extension cord or a power strip or anything because it, it says... Um, it says, do not plug the charger into power strips, extension cords, surge protectors, as they will may interfere with the charger's ability to deliver a full charge cycle. Um, I don't have that option because I'm on a dock at the Alawai here in Honolulu. So I've got it plugged into the... I don't want to set my battery in the sun on the dock right by the water where people are just cruising around um, to charge it. So I'm going to go ahead and just roll the dice. You know, It's okay if it doesn't top up all the way because it'll get topped up all the way. Um, you know, once it's installed, but, um, that's just kind of, I don't have any other options. So that's what we're going to do, but I'm excited to get this thing charging and to start the switch out from my AGMs to the Dakota. Our little light turned red, which means it's charging. And when it turns green, it'll be fully charged. So we'll let that get going and uh, hop into other aspects of the install. Okay, very exciting day in the lithium conversion project. Time to pull out my old AGM batteries and start the sort of like first part of getting the lithiums installed. Um, so I got my Dakota, one of the two Dakotas <clears throat> all topped up and ready to go. And um, I've already dealt with all my solar so all the solar is ready to charge the lithium um, once I get it installed. And um, today I'm going to be pulling out my old AGMs, removing that old battery box, and um, at least getting the first of the two Dakotas installed and wired up. <clears throat> I'm doing that because I live aboard full time, um, so I need power tonight. Um, so I'm kind of having to do it in a way where it's like I've installed certain elements so that I can put in my lithium and then go back and get them both installed and all that. Um, there's a little bit of build out that has to take place in the battery shelf area and I'll know more about how much of that has to take place once I am able to put this down on the shelf and see what we need to do. Now it's time to pull out the old ones. I'll show you guys what the little spot is looks like and um, we'll talk about that and then I'll clamp you guys off so you can watch me wrestle these batteries out. Okay, so that's where we are currently. These two AGMs are coming out to make place for our new batteries that will all live here. Oh boy, I am grateful that this thing is lighter than the AGMs. That is so much easier to deal with. So a tight spot, but this is gonna live around there somewhere. The starter battery is going to live where it used to live here. Um, this is the shunt for the battery monitor. That's going to be going down in the cabin. Um, and uh, yeah, some other stuff that has to get rearranged wiring wise, but this is what we're looking at. Um, so now I just need to figure out how much of this I need to add on to for the uh, battery shelf to accommodate the second uh, Dakota battery. Okay, so moving it around a little bit, I think this actually makes the most sense going in that direction. And then the second one will be here, and then the starter battery there. Um, that gives me most of the weight is on this really well built out section. And then the add on will only be holding, you know, this much of the batteries. Um, and then I'll build an enclosure over them to keep them, keep the weather off of them if any kind of moisture gets down here. But um, yeah, I think this is going to be the orientation that they go in. 
Okay, so it's the time of the project to make custom battery cables, which I'm very excited about. I've already made one. Here's my first one. Um, this is like monster 4 aught wire, huge. And um, I'm gonna show you guys just a little snippet of how I'm going about making these and um, go from there. So it's much cheaper and makes a lot more sense to just buy a bunch of wire uh, cable and then cut it to the lengths you want. And then you take these um, lugs and you crimp them with this hydraulic crimper. Um, so that's what we're about to do. And um, this is a little shorty, like six inch cable. And this one specifically has a three eighth inch in three eight inch lug on one end and a five sixteenths on the other because of the different fittings of where it's going to go. I went into my little area and made all my measurements, a uh, full list of everything I need. And um, so we're just going to be working down that this afternoon and making all the cables. So I'll show you what this is all about, um, just so you can see how it's done. Okay, so I've already cut this. I used this, these little bitty guys, which are not ideal for this size of cable. So if you had bigger ones, it'd be a lot easier, but um, they got the job done. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark this where we need to trim it, to trim that housing off. And when you're doing this, you want to try to not cut through too much so that you don't, you know, you try to not cut the strands in there. You might end up getting some, but just go slow. And uh, you can come back with an X-Acto knife if there's a little bit of that rubber housing that's like a holdout. Yes, yeah, so I got a little bit. Just going to take it off a blade and get rid of those. And then we just pull this off like that and then we got our bare copper strand and you want to make sure that all stays together nice and the way i'm doing this is i just put the bottom in first and just try to keep it all happy and tight to keep all the strands in you might get a couple of strands that find their way out but as many as you can get in as possible so I got one little strand out that's not a big deal we're just gonna wrap that around and it's gonna heat shrink over it so there's our lug see this one already has a heat shrink on it because that end I did first let's go ahead and crimp this lug so put that in like that and I'm using on this one I'm using a 95 size die and I'll turn my knob, which allows pressure to be applied. And then just start pumping it. And you want to do it towards the bottom part of the lug so that it, um, it, it pinches out real good. Okay, now that I've got it just kind of taut, I'll show you what that looks like. So you see that's going to press that shape into it and secure the cable. And you can feel when the die meets and it's all done business. And then I'll just release that. You see? And there we have it. You can see the, the die marks there. Try to pull it. Uh, does not pull off. Now what we gotta do is get our heat shrink out, color coded, slide that over. Take our heat gun. And this heat shrink has adhesive inside that keeps all the moisture out of that connection. So there we have it, our first little six inch positive knocked out. Now we just keep chipping away at our list, do all the positives, all the negatives, and then we can get to wiring up the system. Okay, so today's the day when I start kind of doing a lot of the final wiring up of the batteries. Um, I've been kind of a, in a holding pattern for about a month, uh, waiting for a Class T fuse. Um, 
at the time of me filming this, we're still having a lot of like worldwide part shortages from the global COVID-19 pandemic. And I ordered two Class T fuses almost a month ago and just found out today that they've been back ordered since November and they don't know when they're gonna come in. So what I'm gonna have to do in the meantime is I'm gonna install an A and L 400 amp fuse. Um, and uh, a gentleman on Instagram contacted me who is a, a, spe a like marine electronic specialist. When I had originally posted, this is what I thought I was gonna use as the final install because I'd seen it on a number of builds and he contacted me. I'll put his name on the screen right now because I can't remember it off the top of my head. He contacted me and told me that these A and L fuses with lithium batteries, they can um, short out and actually arc between the two points and that's very dangerous. And he told me I need to use a class T fuse. Um, so I ordered the fuse block and all that stuff. And, um, and then as I did some research on his advice on that subject, I found like on uh, some other big lithium battery sites, um, how to's, they talk about the same thing that, that these A and L fuses are not good for lithium batteries. So, but I'm kind of in a pickle. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and install this right now. The benefit for me is that these, these fuse blocks, they're both from blue C systems. They're the same size. So when I finally find class T fuses, um, that I can get my hands on and buy, then I can just easily get down in there and switch out the two fuse blocks and and go with it but i need to get this project kind of like all the guts of it kind of done so today we're going to be um installing all the custom you know wires uh that i made and um or cables i made and um some different elements of the system and we'll go from there so i spent about i don't know seven or eight hours yesterday working on the batteries <clears throat> and um Projects like these go kind of agonizingly slow. Um, I'll take you down in the lazarette locker right now and show you what I did yesterday. And um, then we'll talk about what I'm getting into today. And um, I just got back from the Marine Supply Store and we'll look at what I had to pick up to move forward with the project. So let's get down in the hole and I'll show you. Okay, so here we are. Got both of my Dakotas set in here. Um, yesterday I got the wires secured, they go to the starter, AGM battery, those are all out of the way. I installed my temporary ANL fuse block, that'll be replaced with my class T fuse block once I can actually locate a 400 amp class T fuse. Um, I made this the world's shortest battery cable. <laughs> um, and um, then I got my my links going into uh, the cabin from the uh, top of the battery switch and that's run and then the ground as well and I'll show you where those two terminate at the other end um, uh, inside the cabin one of the issues I was having yesterday was that the stock bolts these little bolts for the bat, uh, Dakota batteries <clears throat> they're not long enough to accommodate two cables so when you're running them parallel you can't stack them and make these actually reach the threads um, so today I went to Pops Marine Surplus and um, I bought longer bolts the bolts are M8 so they're metric and then 1.25 I believe is the thread pitch and um, I'll show you the, the one that I took out here to take with me to make sure I got the right one and the ones I bought to replace them. And um, I already tested it and it definitely fits. So now I can go ahead and move forward on getting this thing properly wired up parallel. And this was just hooked up temporary yesterday. So I had power last night and um, will obviously be replaced by the proper four aught gauge cable. One of the things that I ran into yesterday is I ran out of the 5 16 lugs that I needed to make the rest of my cables yesterday. So I went and bought um, four pairs of the 5 16 four aught lugs, and, um, and I bought four pair of six gauge 5 16 
plugs uh, for like the solar wiring and then also some of the other like the B2B cable that I need to make and all that stuff. So this and then here are my bolts. So here's the one that comes stock with the Dakotas and then I bought with all the correct washers one that's just a little bit longer. Um, and then just to be safe I bought the next size up as well which is way too long but I could always cut it down to size but I believe that this next size up is going to be perfect so we'll see how that works out. <clears throat> Classic you know quality material style <laughs> all of this right here cost me $72 so um, yeah it's um you pay for quality but we want it done right and um so that's what it's going to take let's get down under the chart table and i'll show you where the two long four out cables i made yesterday where they terminate okay here's a chart under the chart table come in here <clears throat> um i have the cover on right now but this is the lynx distributor where it's like basically a very very fancy bus bar <clears throat> And I got my battery monitor moved uh, for the Victron battery monitor, and that's all hooked up. And um, <clears throat> there's like a, I don't know if it's copper or bronze little um, kind of crossover bar that I bought from Ex the Explorist website. And I'll put that link down below. He has a great channel for like van life stuff and really, really outstanding how-to stuff. And he, his shop on his website is amazing. So he makes these custom little connectors for this purpose specifically so i bought a pair of those to have um, but these are the two ends of the long cables that i made yesterday and how they terminate onto the bus bar now today uh, i'll get the batteries running parallel and then i'll start working on getting the victron inverter charger wired up to this system and then the solar which is just temporarily hooked up right now with its proper cables made run into the um, Lynx setup as well. So now it's time to get into some more boat yoga and um, get the stuff knocked out and I'll show you how today's progress goes. Okay, very exciting. I have both of the Dakota Lithium 200 amp hour batteries wired in parallel. All the custom cables are made in four uh, uh, wire cable. It's so gnarly and big. And um, I'll show you guys this setup. And I'll be deinstalling all of this um, when I get ready to install the straps and all the final mounting. But right now, she's all wired up, happy, and running in the boat. So let's check it out. So here we go. Our beautiful Dakotas sitting in their new home. We got our giant monster cables, all custom made. And... Uh, Here's our fuse block, um, and yeah, it's all, all hooked up and happy. And this spot here is where my AGM starter battery lives. So I'll be getting that installed um, later today as well. I gotta run all the wiring for the B2B um, from Victron, and um, so I'm waiting to hook that up before I reinstall the starter battery. Super stoked on this. Now it's time to go down below and get to work on wiring up the Victron two, Multi Plus 2000 VA inverter charger combo. And um, yeah, move forward on getting all of this dialed in. Super stoked. Thanks for watching this week's episode. Please join us next week where we go over all the parts of the new system and get everything up and running. If you enjoy the content on this channel and would like to contribute, you can consider joining the Patreon crew. Thanks for watching. Fair winds until next time.